Even though we have built our cosmological model based on observations, theories, and mathematics supporting those theories, there are a few clues that the universe isn't completely adding up. You may have heard about the crisis in cosmology. Well, basically, the crisis originated when different methods of measuring the age of the universe started giving different results, and still do. Astrophysicists are puzzled by this phenomenon. The James Webb Space Telescope, through its latest findings, has only exacerbated the dilemma. The cosmos is expanding, with galaxies in distant realms drifting further from us. Utilizing the cosmic microwave background, remnants of the universe's infancy at roughly 3,180,000 years old, we derive the expansion rate. Another approach involves observing distant supernovas to gauge their intrinsic brightness against their observed luminosity, termed standard candles. This yields an estimate of the universe's expansion rate at the time of the supernova. The resultant figure is known as the Hubble constant, yet the variance between these two methods is termed the Hubble tension, marking the critical juncture in cosmology. But this is not the only crisis anymore. A recent cosmological distress has emerged, challenging our models like never before. I spent all my life developing a particular uh, a theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned. I welcome that, because that's how we move forward. That's how we make progress in science. When gazing skyward, provided you're not within a light-polluted urban environment, You'll observe myriad stars and even discern the Andromeda galaxy amidst this celestial tapestry. This plethora of stars and galaxies prompts the question, what proportion of the universe do they occupy? In essence, how much matter constitutes the cosmos? Although seemingly straightforward, answering this question proves remarkably complex. The crux of the issue lies in the disagreement among contemporary cosmological observations regarding the distribution of matter in the universe today, thus spawning a perplexing new cosmic conundrum. The S8 tension serves as a measure of the lumpiness or clustering of matter within the universe. To simplify, envision the universe as an immense puzzle scattered with pieces of matter throughout space. Scientists seek to comprehend how this matter is distributed and how it coalesces. There are two avenues for measurement. Firstly, by meticulously calculating it through low redshift observations like weak gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon wherein the immense gravitational pull of massive objects such as black holes and galaxies serves as cosmic magnifiers, bending and distorting light from distant objects that would otherwise remain unseen, offering unique insights into the vast universe. However, the S8 value derived from the second method, the standard model of cosmology based on cosmic microwave background measurements, diverges from values obtained through low redshift observations. This incongruity lies at the enigmatic core of the S-tension. Now where do we go from here? Evidently, there's a fundamental aspect that eludes our comprehension, despite the plethora of theories, observations, and supporting hypothetical entities. What's the missing piece? To unravel this mystery, astronomers leveraged one of the most formidable supercomputers globally to conduct the most extensive cosmological simulations to date. The magnitude of this endeavor is staggering. The simulations consumed over 50 million hours of computer time, spread across 30,000 processors within the supercomputer. Dubbed Flamingo, this project stands as a monumental feat, an intricate acronym denoting full hydro large-scale structure simulations with all sky mapping for the interpretation of next-generation observations. Beyond its sheer size and high resolution, Flamingo distinguishes itself from prior simulations by incorporating more than just gravity. Historically, most cosmological computational simulations focused solely on modeling dark matter, the primary constituent of matter. However, 
Although baryonic matter accounts for only a fifth of the universe's total mass, its impact on cosmic matter distribution at smaller scales is significant. For instance, galactic winds propelled by supermassive black holes and supernova explosions may impede galaxy growth. Unlike earlier simulations that exclusively considered dark matter, Flamingo tracks ordinary matter as well. While dark matter dominates gravity, the contribution of ordinary matter can no longer be overlooked. Despite making substantial strides, such as precisely replicating the formation of the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy, among numerous others, the simulation faltered in elucidating the observed feeble clustering of matter in the contemporary universe. Essentially, it did not address the core issue it was designed to resolve, the S8 tension. Alternatively, one could posit that the Flamingo simulations potentially unveiled discrepancies within our revered standard model of cosmology. Furthermore, the simulation contradicts findings from the James Webb Space Telescope and other observatories regarding the distribution of matter in the cosmos. The current theory beautifully explains how galaxies evolved, but there's a problem. It predicts that they're 7% more closely clustered together than they actually are. The new computer simulation is much more detailed and takes into account the role of supermassive black holes, but that's not right either. It's still 5% more clumpy. Recent observations from Webb have indeed confirmed the existence of the Hubble tension. Yes, the James Webb Space Telescope has corroborated the findings of its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. This groundbreaking observatory has unearthed that Hubble's calculations regarding the universe's expansion rate are exceptional, intensifying the so-called Hubble tension. Essentially, measurements of the universe's expansion rate, as defined by the Hubble constant, fail to synchronize. The cause remains elusive, but some hypotheses propose new physics to reconcile this apparent contradiction. With measurement errors eliminated as a factor, we're left with the intriguing and exhilarating possibility that we've misconstrued the universe's nature. New theories are emerging, with some advocating for the dismissal of dark matter. What are your thoughts? Share your comments and remember to subscribe to Spacebeat News because this is your space.